Hi guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back to my channel. And today I thought we'd do something frivolous and fun and absolutely positively useless for most things. <laughs> Unless this is your style like it is mine. But anyway, let's have some fun today. So we're gonna make, um, probably if you saw the thumbnail, we're gonna be making some little pendants and they're gonna look like little bookcases. So let's get started. You probably already have everything you need at home and or, um, or you can jimmy rig something. No offense to anybody named Jimmy. <laughs> um, so what we're gonna start with is we need a piece of um, scrapbook paper and I would suggest cardstock. This cardstock actually has a wood grain pattern on one side, which kind of makes it easy for a bookcase. And these are, this is the measurement of your rectangle. You'll need a piece of cardstock that is two and three quarter by three and five eighths inches or 70 by 92 millimeters. And do yourself a favor and try to find something that is either brown or you could use a um, like a Tim Holtz type of cardstock, Seven Gypsies, you know, Graphic 45, something with a real pretty pattern on it. <clears throat> I'm going to use something with a wood pattern because I want my bookcase to look like a wooden bookcase. You don't have to do that, it's totally cool, but um, just think about that. Think about what you would like your bookcase to look like. Um, alternatively, if you do not have something with a pattern on it, you can always get like some cardstock that's already brown or craft colored. Um, even if you have something that is white or off-white like this, you can always use Distress Ink and um, distress it and then it'll be brown, right? But maybe you have a painted bookcase. Uh, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, so this is what we're going to do with our little rectangle. We are going to score three eighths of an inch or nine and a half millimeters into the inside twice. So go in one, two, three, and make a score mark. And then another one, two, three from there and make another one. And then from this side, you're gonna go in one, two, three from the edge. Don't count the, don't count the one that it meets up with. That one doesn't count. You go in one, two, three, make a score mark. And then you go in one, two, three, make another one. We're gonna switch that counterclockwise one, two, three, score mark, one, two, three, score mark, and then same over here, one, two, three, one, two, three. <clears throat> okay, so if you can see, try to get that in the light, see how it's, we've got our score marks, okay? So what we're going to do let me get my pointer. We are going to cut off the three corners. So wherever there is an X, we're gonna cut that off. So these three squares on each corner are gonna be gone. So if you look at, if you look at this, you'll see that there's a grouping of four boxes at the end. The three on the outside are going to get taken away. So you just grab some scissors and you just cut on your score lines. And we just take it away. And I'll do all four corners. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, as you can see, I've cut off all those three corners. And then we are going to make a little teeny tiny little sliver cut. Let's see if I can get that to 
show up. Okay. See where the little dark little wedge is right there? So this is the long, the long way. So we're going to wedge in on those on this little this little tab here. So here th this is. And let me grab this pen. And these little tabs, these little four extra boxes are going to get these are going to be the little tabs that hold everything together. And I'm going to just take a little wedge little uh, strip off of them so that they tuck in nicely. And we're going to do that on all four corners. And it's, it's, it doesn't have to be measured or anything. It's just, um, you just take a little, a little slice off, a little wedge slice off. So now it looks like that. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to cut our tabs away from uh, from the edge right here. So we're going to cut into this line, into this line, into this line, and then into this line. So on here, we're going to cut on the score mark into there, into there, into there, and into there. And that turns it into a little flap that will fold away from the rest and it helps to kind of hold your little bookcase together. Some of you who have made boxes before, um, you know the drill. Okay, let me get all these little pieces out of the way. Okay, I don't think I need the scoreboard anymore. Let me, let me, let me just get rid of that. Okay, so now we have our little box here. I'm going to grab some glue. So grab your favorite craft glue. This is a three-in-one advanced. Um, it grabs pretty quickly and I like that. So, um, especially if you don't use a ton. If you use a ton, then it takes longer. Um, so what you're gonna do at this point is you have a decision to make because this is going to be mostly what you see, but you may want to cover the inside box with something. You're not really going to see it, but like if the light would shine on it, I, I don't want white shining between my books. So I just took a piece of black scrapbook paper. You can take a Sharpie and color, color it with a Sharpie, um, with a pencil, with a crayon, uh, you know, you don't have to like actually glue anything down if you don't want to. Um, I just had this piece of cardstock. I mean, it's scrapbook paper. I guess it's not, it's not cardstock. It's just scrapbook paper laying around. And I just thought, well, that's easy peasy. So I'm going to cover that inside square just so that it doesn't show up in the light. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start folding in and fold in on your score marks and fold in and fold in and then we'll fold the second layer, the upper, the top layer on your score marks Fold those guys in and fold those guys in. Okay, and now we're going to put a bead of glue on the outside edge of each one of, come on, pan, of the flaps. Comprende? So here is our glue and just a little, little bit of glue here, a little bit of glue here. It doesn't take a lot. A little glue here and a little glue there where I had the pen mark. We are going to fold our little flaps in, 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 in. The sides get folded in first, the long sides. So we fold this up and then over the top of those little, those little flaps. And it's going to feel like you need 80 hands, and you do. So please don't feel bad, because you do. You need 80 hands. Okay, there's one side. 
And then let's flip this side in like so. And then these guys go in. And now I usually take a pen or a pencil or a bone folder or something and I just kind of set my corners, make sure that everything's folded in nice. Like I said, this glue uh, grabs pretty fast, so you don't need any binder clips to hold it. But you, if you have a glue that doesn't hold quite so quickly, you may need some binder clips to you know, keep it snug while it dries. So, so far this is our little bookcase and see it looks brown. You can see where the paper was folded, how it might have some little white marks. So at this point, if you would like to get um, some, some distress ink or oxide, whatever, and just kind of touch up those little white spots, um, that would be a good time to do that. If you, um, have just white cardstock or you know off white or you know whatever and you want to paint it or distress stain it or something like that um, I suggest if you're gonna paint it make your box first just make your box and then put a light coat of paint on it inside and out if you're going to stain it I suggest staining first then folding it so, but you don't have to do that. You know, I'm not your mom, so, you know, do what you want. You guys are adults. Well, most of you are adults. Some of you aren't adults. Okay, so here is our little bookcase ready to rock and roll. Um, this Distress Oxide is really cool stuff, by the way. Just, if you haven't gotten any, I don't know, something about it is just really cool. And you can even go over and kind of make it make it look like an older bookcase. Kind of dirty. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna start stop fussing around. Okay. <clears throat> so our bookcase is ready to rock and roll. So I'm gonna set that aside for just a moment and let that ink kind of dry up a little bit so it's not sticky. Now, what you're gonna need is a 3 8 dowel rod, or 3 8 is like nine and a half millimeters. You know what's perfect usually? Is an old wooden spoon. So, like the handles on those are 3 8 of an inch. Um, if you do not have a wooden spoon that you can go steal from the kitchen drawer, there are some other things that you can kind of rig up that will be similar. You can also use a pencil as like a guide and roll up a few layers of cardstock and then glue it together. Okay, and let this, let this dry. You're gonna have to put a binder clip on this and, and let this dry a minute and then you just cut off the excess and then you sit there for 15 minutes while this dries <laughs> and try to try to keep it like um, around 3 eighths of an inch so if you have a wooden spoon you can kind of you know gauge that you can kind of you know hold them up together and see if it's like a similar a similar circumference or diameter, I guess. This is diameter, not circumference. Okay, so and then you just slide your pencil out and then you have like a little form, okay? So if you don't have a dowel rod, make yourself some little 3 8 inch, you know, cardstock. Just make several layers around a pencil so that it's a nice, sturdy little dude. <clears throat> and do yourself a favor, and if you're gonna do that, Use two inch strips. So this is a two inch strip of cardstock because that is what's going to, that's what we're gonna wrap our books around. So here's a dowel rod from a, from a spoon and I've marked it at a two inch increment there. And I'm just gonna take, these are like garden pruners and I'm just going to kind of score it, score it, score it all the way in. If you try to just chomp down all the way through, it's gonna splinter. And it may splinter a little bit anyway. 
but if you make little chompy chompies around it and kind of eat away at it a little bit at a time, then it's gonna be a smoother cut. If you have like a little coping saw, that will work well too. Please don't cut yourself. There we go. Please don't cut yourself. If you use something, you know, like a craft knife or something, please be careful. These are real slippery and rolly and I don't, I don't want anybody to get hurt. So please be careful. When in doubt, just make some cardstock ones. So anyway, if it has a rough end, you can, you can take some sandpaper and just kind of clean up the end. The reason why I like the dowel rod is it has a little bit of a weight to it, and so I think your pendant will hang. Um, you know, if, you're, if a pendant doesn't have a whole lot of weight to it, how it's kind of, I don't know, kind of loose and, and floppy and anyway, but it doesn't matter, it's okay. You know, it, it doesn't matter. So get your printouts that um, if you go down into the description box below this video, it'll send you to a link to my Flickr page where you'll be able to print out some little miniature book spines. And this is what they will print out looking like in these strips. And so you just cut out a strip and then you just cut them apart where the color meets the next color. And then you have, you have these guys like this. And I've made five different book spines and each bookcase, if you make it this size, will hold three books and so you can, you can mix and match and choose whichever ones that you would like. I kind of go ahead and roll them into a little bit. I kind of train the paper. These are two that I have already, I have already um, put on the dowel rods. And then I need to pick one more. So, you know, you can lay these up next to each other and go, okay, do I want this one? You know, do I want this one? Do I want this guy? You know, you know. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take my next dowel rod and I could absolutely just use this too. Doesn't matter. And I think I'm going to do the um, Hans Christ Christian Andersen fairy tales. I'm going to put some glue on the back. of this, it's important to get make sure the glue goes all the way to the edge. And you just grab your dowel rod and try to make sure that your spine is, is going up and down and it's not like wonky. You don't want a wonky spine. Okay, so now you just wrap the paper around the back of either your dowel rod or your makeshift dowel rod out of cardstock. And this might take a second to hold. So, so that's why I went ahead and went ahead and made two so you didn't have to um, sit here for, you know, 10 minutes while I held each dowel rod. <laughs> some rubber bands or something. <laughs> so if you do, if you do get some rubber bands or something, which I don't have at the moment, I was remiss. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of lay this aside. So you have a choice at this time. So your little bookcase, now that the ink or the paint or, you know, whatever is dry on it, I suggest giving it a coat with a matte medium. And you can use any kind of matte medium or you could use some, some Mod Podge. Um, if you do Mod Podge and you live in a wet, humid climate, um, let the Mod Podge dry and then go over it with a shot of this and this will lock in that tackiness. Um, well, I mean, you still might be tacky, <laughs> but you won't be sticky, how's that? Um, so, so that's a little trick that um, I tell my students about Mod Podge. Um, but you could also use like a Liquitex matte medium. And I just like to give this a little bit of a coating because, let me grab a, let me grab a, you know, a brush. I like to give it a little bit of a coating to kind of protect it against, um, you know, rubbing against clothes or that kind of thing. It just kind of gives it a little bit 
of a protection and it doesn't have to be a ton. You're just a nice little coating and it kind of gives your, your bookcase. Um, I use the matte so it's not a shiny Mod Podge and neither is my matte medium. My, you know, I don't use gloss medium um, on this kind of thing. So, but it does give it like a little bit of a sheen, just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of a sheen, uh, but not enough to make it shiny. If you want your bookcase to be glossy, then use a glossy one. But this also gives the um, cardstock of your bookcase some structure. It kind of helps with the structure of it. So at least that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Okay, and if you want to give, before you put your books in your bookcase, if you want to give your books a little coating of the matte medium or Mod Podge, you know, you can do that too. That is absolutely up to you. Um, not totally necessary. I don't think these books are going to get, um, you know, handled. <laughs> They're not going to get read, so it shouldn't be a big deal, but I'm going to do it anyway just to kind of show you what it looks like. I need something for these to sit against here so they don't roll. It will help protect the paper if you happen to, you know, be wearing this and it starts raining. <laughs> so maybe that's a good, a good reason to do it. And we'll give these just a minute to dry. I will say that I think adding the matte medium or Mod Podge to the books kind of deepens the color a little bit and adds to the contrast of the uh, writing. So if that helps at all. Okay, now we're going to take our bookcase and our glue and got glue all on the outside. I'll have to fix that. And we're going to put glue down on the inside like this. And I'm going to put just a little bit on the top and the bottom and just a tiny bit on the bottom edge of the sides. Okay. And I like that. And then you can decide how you want your books to be placed inside your bookcase. There's one. And two. And three. Just kind of, kind of hold your your bookcase together. Make sure it's nice and square. So there is our little bookcase. Here's our little bookcase. Isn't it cute? And now what you can do is you can take one of these. These are glue-on bales, and they're for pendants. And they look something kind of like that. There's all kinds of shapes and sizes and you just put glue on the back of this little, the flat paddle part and that's what you glue onto the back of your bookcase. So I would suggest using like E6000 or some kind of a jewelry glue that is going to um, hold everything together nicely. I'm gonna use some glossy accents and I'm just gonna put a, a little dollop right in there and then I just kind of lay the bookcase down on top of it just like that and you can put a little you know you could put a little bottle of something on top of this if you wanted to you know hold it down while it dries or something like that if you decide to use like the cardstock tube instead um, if you don't use like a dark con uh, card stock and you have some, maybe some white hanging out, you can always grab your ink and ink up that top so that you can't see the, you know, the white. And so then that way when you put it into your bookcase, then it looks like, then it kind of looks like that. 
looks it looks great. Um, so either way you decide to to do this, it's gonna look it's gonna look just fine. So here is one that I made yesterday, and you know what I did was I just covered my box in washi tape. And so here is this little bookcase, and these books were not covered in any kind of a matte medium. And then here's the one that we just made, and these were covered in a matte medium. So you can kind of see a little bit of a difference. This is a little deeper, so it depends on how you want your books to, you know, to look. So just, just keep that in mind. And then you can either hang it on a chain. If you would like to, you could get some, like some hemp cord and you can make your own, your own uh, chain to hang it on or thread or cord or, you know, whatever it is that you would like. And it depends on, you know, what you want your necklace to look like if you want, you want it on a chain or not. I, I happen to like chains. I think they, they hang nicely. Um, but these can also look really, really nice. You could, you could get some, let's say some sari silk. Get yourself a, a length of sari silk. And then add to it, like here is some seam binding ribbon. And you could get yourself a length of this. Okay, and then you could put them together and feed that through the bale, just like that. And you could use all kinds of colors. Um, you could use green or, and then what you could do is you could make like a knot right here. And then you make another one over here. If I can get this even. <laughs> And then that's really cute too. You can just tie this in a knot and just, and then just loop it over your head, which is, you know, super cute. So you probably noticed on the printout too, there's these circles with these graphics in them. And what I thought would be really cool is to make a little charm that hangs off the bottom of your bookcase or, you know, I guess you could make earrings or, you know, charms for a journal or all kinds of things, right? So like on the back of this guy, I glued, come on, I glued a little jump ring. I didn't do a very great job, so do a better job than I did. And then I cut out kind of a heavy piece of card stock. And then to kind of make things a little simpler here, I will cut around these. And this is um, 60 pound hammer mill um, color copy digital cover. <laughs> Get it at Amazon. So I'll put the link down in the description box below. This is what I like to print on. So I'm just gonna use my one inch punch and I'm gonna punch out um, the definition for book. And you can put, I, I gave you enough to where you could put them on both sides. Of course you could print it out several times. But you can put it on both sides if you want. Depending on how it's mounted, it may or not flip over back and forth. You know, that's going to be, you know, up to you, right? So um, I'm just going to quickly, I'm just going to use Mod Podge because it's, you know, it's right here in front of me. And I'm just going to grab a little brush. And on this piece of heavy card, I'm just going to paint a little Mod Podge. And you can use chipboard or, you know, all kinds of things. And then we're gonna just plop that puppy on top, just like that. And then I'm gonna give it another coat on 
top just to protect the image and we can let that dry for a second. So I'll set that aside just for a second to let that dry. Another thing that you could do that would be nice is like you could get like a little frame that has like a one inch um, blank spot in the middle and then you could you could punch these out or cut them out and then drop them into these to hang off the bottom as well. There's all kinds of options if you go to um, like a craft store or the jewelry store um, where you get your craft supplies that you'll have all kinds of options like this. But if you didn't want to have to do that and you just wanted to use something that you had at home, I wanted to show you that option that so you could just, you know, do something basically for free, whatever you have laying around. So as soon as this dries, I'm going to punch a hole in it. So I will be right back. Okay, and we're dry, and then I am going to take the, my little crocodile thingy, and I'm just gonna punch a hole, and I'm gonna punch, punchy punch a little hole, like that. So now you have just like a little, a little charm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to grab another one of these jump rings and of course I have like the most heavy duty huge jump rings that you know you just you know a little overkill but it's what I have so that's what I'm using <laughs> and I'm just going to open that with some pliers and stick the jump ring through and then stick it through this one Close it up like that. And then you have this really cute little charm that hangs off the bottom of your bookcase. It's so cute. Okay. So you could also get some of these. What are these called? Um. Are they called, are they ball chains? Is that what they're called? And it's like this off gold color and, and I used, you know, silver on my bookcase. So, you know, you might wanna, you might wanna color coordinate a little better than I am. I, this is, like I said, this is just what I have at the, at the moment. But this is also would be really cute to wear on one of, one of, one of these, especially if it was the right color. But how cute is that? It's just adorable. Just adorable. And I really like the little the little librarian shushing. I think that's great. And then on the back side of that one, I put one of the other circles. One of the other it's the letter, the right the written letter. So, I hope you guys Make some bookcases. Go make some bookcases with some little baby books. And um, like I said in the description box below, um, you can go to Flickr and you can get these images so that you can make these books. And then just follow my instructions at the beginning of this video for uh, making your little box for your bookcase. If you have a... Um, an old wooden spoon. I highly suggest using the wooden spoon and then maybe cutting it with the, you know, garden shears. But if you don't, like I said, we made them out of the rolled paper as well. Um, just try not to roll too much paper or your books will be taller than your, taller than your bookcase. So just watch that as you're making those. I hope you had fun today. I hope this is something that you will you will try. I know there's graduations are coming up and that kind of thing. And you know, maybe this would be a great gift for um, a teacher's present or a librarian. You know, maybe there was somebody at the school that um, your kid really connected with. And so, yeah, I think it's a great gift idea. So I hope you make some and I hope you give some away and uh, makes the book nerd in your life happy. Thank you guys for playing with me today. 
Um, pretty soon I'm going to be um, showing a new set of journals that I am finishing up. I still have a couple more to get through. Um, these, these are kind of cool because, let me, let me scoot some stuff out of the way here. Let me scoot my bookcases so I can show you the books, right? So like, like this dude, he really, really looks old, right? Nice old looking worn book, super, super cool. Um, got all kinds of neat stuff in it. Um, not quite done with him yet but super cute. I want, I'm gonna move this thing because I think it might have some glue on it. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't want glue everywhere. So there's this one. And then um, I always have the question in my mind, you know, I, I bind, I use my, my own binding technique, but I always thought, can you bind a junk journal like a traditional book is bound? There are some parameters that uh, you have to kind of go around. Our pages are different. Sometimes they're decorated. So it's a little bit different of a process, but the answer is yes. So while I was sick with the flu, and this is what happens when I get a fever, right? Um, I was able to um, think about that while I had nothing else to do. And um, I came up with a simplified way to bind a junk journal, but in a traditional fashion, just like, you know, just like a book is bound if you're gonna go buy, you know, at the store or whatever. Well, maybe not at the store, because those are, you know, commercially bound. But, you know, old school, old school book binding. Um, isn't this a cool cover? So it says Day Ledger, and I made this cover. Here's the back with a letter imprinted on the back of this leather, I mean this ledger. And then here is our cool, wicked cool spine. But um, this is a creation that I made, that I developed a design, and then this one too. Cool, right? So this one, is more of a burgundy color. It's got a little B on the back, but you can see it looks all worn and the spine looks worn. But these are traditionally bound um, with the end papers tipped in. Um, this one, this one is basically, well, it's not just basically, it's all tea stain paper. That's all it is. It's just blank tea stain paper. And then this one, I actually did some sewing. It is not bedecked, but it is got some sewing in it and some random pages as opposed to just all coffee stain, tea stain pages. Um, but as you can see, it is bound traditionally. And we've got the headbands up at the top and the bottom, and um, I think they're really cool. They feel great, they open well, so you can lay it down and it opens nicely. It, they open nice and, and wide, and here's like this one. It just opens up super nice. So like I said, there's some things that have to be done because the way junk journals are made or when you use tea stain paper it is different than using just regular white copy paper so i was able to develop a way to be able to do that so this might become um, a course on how to traditionally bind a junk journal um, for people especially that are into old school traditional type type bindings and and maybe they they don't want something super duper floofy they just want to be able to make a really cool old looking book and they want to learn how to do this in you know old school fashion um so yeah so it was actually a lot of fun i'm going to be making some more um because yeah, it was, the process is actually great. I actually made these end papers myself. I printed those myself, and um, but yeah, 
and this one I used paper that I had. So anyway, so that I'm going to be making some more of, of this kind too and then I've got a couple others that I'm going to be making some um, uh, scholar's ledger that, I, that I've promised. So I'm going to be making some of those as well. Now that I'm feeling better, um, maybe I'll get some work done, right? If I stop distracting myself with um, miniature bookcases because this was a lot of fun. This was like a lot of fun. So, yeah. All right, kids. Thank you so much again for stopping by. And I hope you had fun today. I had a lot of fun. Big, huge hugs from me. And I will see you really, really soon. Bye, guys.